Hello, I'm Rosie Sargent from Scion and I will be presenting today about some work we've been doing producing sawn timber from young cypress trees. <clears throat> so in 1997, Scion established a cypress hybrid trial which included a number of new cypress clones and these trees are now becoming large enough that we can use them for processing studies, like seeing what sort of sawn timber we can get from them. Uh, another aim of this work was to see what sort of sawn timber recoveries we can get from relatively young trees that um, have not been pruned and have not been thinned, so a relatively low cost um, silvicultural regime. And Dean Satchel from the New Zealand Farm Forestry Association was quite heavily involved in this work and he had a new soaring strategy that he wanted to test for these cypresses to try and maximize the recovery of wide high wide boards with a um, high grade. So the um, two clones we were looking at was GH5 which is a suppressus lusitanica and a Venzii which is a hybrid and we got eight trees of the um, Lusitanica and six of the Avenzii. You can see the Lusitanica trees were a little bit larger, um, but they had a little bit more sweep to them. So the soaring was done at uh, Ropehu Sawmill in Ratahi. They do a lot of cypress soaring, so it was an ideal site for us to use. <clears throat> when we do soaring studies at Scion, we tend to apply sheets of barcodes the ends of our logs you can see them in the picture here and they stay attached to the boards after the soaring and it means we can track each individual board back to the tree it came from and to the position in the tree which is really useful. Uh, normally say when you're soaring radii out of pine typically if boards if the logs have a lot of sweep you would have the ends of the logs pointing up or pointing down sometimes called horns up or horns down here we had the logs on their side on the saw carriage um, because we had this um, resawing technique to try and um, mitigate the effect of the sweep while still getting quite wide boards out of the logs. And so yeah, the main objective was seeing if we could get these large recovery of wider boards out of these logs. So each log was cut into flitches. Most of them were 25 millimeter thick, but we did cut some at 30 or 50 millimeters thick. And the soaring went very well without any problems with cracking or growth stress or any of the issues we've had with soaring eucalypts. So log gets sawn into flitches, then it gets flipped over and then sawn all the way through. Then these flitches get docked into two pieces, um, not necessarily docked in half. Uh, the point um, that they're docked at gets chosen in order to maximize the recovery of timber you would get out of each half. So if you have uh, a flitch with a lot of sweep in it, like this top one, if you cut it in the middle, you end up with two straighter flitches that you can then resaw. Um, or if you have a lot of taper and say some large defect, you can cut to um, minimize the impact of that and so then once they've been um, cross cut these flitches were edged in a twin blade edger and you can see the green outlines in the diagram at the bottom shows how you're able to get wider boards out of these two halves than you would if you were able just sawing just edging the entire flitch so from this we got quite a high green recovery so 58 percent of the volume of logs that went in we got back out as sawn timber so that was a really good result. The um, boards were then fillet stacked and air dried in Ratahi down to around 16% moisture content and then we got them transported to Scion to be graded. Quality of the timber after drying was very good we didn't really see any um, evidence of uh, drying defects like surface checking, we didn't see any um, signs of collapse. Uh, previously I have seen cell collapse uh, when drying Lusitanica, so it was good to see that we, we didn't have any here. 
So the grading, uh, we graded to a range of appearance grades. Uh, we didn't have a clears grade. Every, every single board had knots in it. Uh, so we had what we called a cladding grade. This is similar to the dressing grade in the New Zealand grading standards, but has um, tighter specifications around um, knots, for example, and this is intended as um, timber you would use for a Cypress weatherboard, which is quite a common high value application for rum Cypress sawn timber in New Zealand. Um, then we had merchantable grade and then box grade, which is essentially reject. Um, then uh, number one framing, so a visual structural grade. And for the larger boards, we also measured the acoustic stiffness. And um, I should note that when we were doing the grading, often uh, before you grade timber, you would dock any damage off the ends of the boards, potentially resaw them to a different width if there are defects on the side of the boards. We graded the boards as if that had happened, but we didn't actually do that. So the graded volume for each board was generally a bit smaller than the volume of the board itself, because we assumed that things would have been um, cut off them. And the barcodes are still attached to the boards, so we're able to track this grade information back to each individual log. And once we have finished this work, this graded timber will be available for other projects. So we're going to be looking at the durability of the Avenzii being a relatively new hybrid. We don't have a lot of information about how it performs. Uh, and we're going to be looking at characteristic stresses. So this is um, bending properties of full size boards, which is required for standards, and also looking at mechanical properties of small clear samples that are cut from different positions in the trees. So um, some very high level results from the grading. The grading was only finished very recently and we haven't finished analyzing the data. So we got 51% recovery of dry graded timber from the volume of logs that went into the process. So we're pretty pleased with that. And the recovery of our two highest grades, which was the cladding grade and the number one framing were very, very high. So every board had a length in it that would meet the number one framing requirements and more than 90% of the boards met the um, cladding grade. Uh, it should be noted that if you were to use this for cladding in New Zealand, um, it would need, the boards would need to be either resawn to remove um, sapwood from the edges or you would have to use some other process like say thermal modification to increase the durability of the sapwood. Uh, so being young trees we have quite a high proportion of sapwood in these boards. So it's only 30% heartwood say for the Lusitanica uh, but much higher at 55% for the Avenzii. And the uh, boards that were downgraded to merchantable grade or box grade the main reason for that was that they had bark encased knots. And I'd like to acknowledge all of the people who um, helped me with this work. There's always a large team of people behind these projects. And I would like to thank you for listening. <laughs>